Welcome back to Let's Play Super Robot Tyson D. Last time, remember, we finally got ourselves a little bit of a hookup. So, in the next part, I think you're going to like this one. Let's go. Mr. Negotiator. The team at the tower saw a live broadcast by the Zanska. At the guillotine of the guillotine at the village they went to. Farah brings out Oi Nung. They refuse to cooperate with them at all being operated. Or being captured, rather. Watching this. Watching this, Marbet comments how the Zonscare Empire is run. They believe in their queen, Maria, and that they believe they become warped to kill people in her name. By the geezer Kakachi and the bit younger geezer Taichiro. Upon saying this, the doctor says it's better to fight Shin Dragon. Maybe it's better to get cooperation from Oz or the Zonscare. Hayato doesn't like it, knowing it, it's Oi Nong's last wish. Agrees to join forces with Oz by bringing Trey's back to plans. I do on the last one. But I think it was about I'm on the right one. Well anyway, moving on. Yeah. My bet comments about the Zonscare about how the Zonscare is run. They believe in their queen, Maria, and that they believe they become warped to kill people in her name. By the old geezer Kakachi and a bit young geezer Taichiro. All the kids except Uso are ushered out in time so they don't see what happens next. And we'll leave it at that. Schwartz doesn't like it either. I believe it to be impossible. But with Trey's in his self-imposed retirement. Yep. Uh, yeah. That was the guillotine and um, <clears throat> you know what happened next all was silent so this is where they join forces with Oz Even though Hayato doesn't like it. Schwartz doesn't like it either. So there is only one man that could help us in this point who can who may negotiate with Trey's. But 
Roger Smith, the number one negotiator. Meanwhile, Kento and Danshi are taken along with Junko and Saika because readings indicate that battles may be nearby. you know who that is, Norman. At Paradigm City, Roger comes home to meet Junko and Saika, who are here to request his service. They're here instead of Hayato because it's rumored that Roger is more agreeable towards women. You've seen him, Big O. You know how he works. Roger, the fact that he says he'll need more t some time to think about about it, and he's in the middle of a job also. Norman also informs him of a, of a robot rampaging across town, and Roger rush Junko and Saika out. This part of the story is talking about how I suddenly showed up. General Dustin, a friend of Roger who doesn't know that He's in the Megadeuce, watches as Big O comes to fight. So I'm going to go on and move the story along because you know the rest. <laughs> Big O! Showtime! Of course, this is Beck, and well, you know what happens. <laughs> he is controlling Dorothy One. Action! Yep, it's the theme song.
damn straight. And this is Dorothy too. <laughs> In the hole that Big O once made is Dorothy 2, a life-size android. Beck shouted that Mr. Negotiator doesn't want to hurt Dorothy 2, so why don't we leave alone? And he'll take that Megadeus as a prize. Roger says that's not a good negotiation and stop the Dorothy 1 from ripping out Dorothy 2 putting her in the cockpit and destroying the number one. Like so. Moving onward. Suddenly Oz's forces showed up and Junko Radio Roger. Roger asks how they knew that he piles the big O when Angel comes up and apologizes, saying that money is money, so she sold him out. At least the good people. Roger knows that Angel is one dangerous woman. He then tries to negotiate with Oz, but the commander won't listen, and the fight begins. Big O. And joining us in this battle is Sayaka K. 
Kento and Dan Danji and Junko. meet them all head on shall we Play with me now. At this point, <laughs> Kento and Danji are back from the search, which it shows Barilos has landed here 50 years ago. Kento wants to end this quickly to continue the search and attack hastily in its counterattack. Kento notes that, that if Barilos is here, they have no problems. So he starts calling out to it, and they cross symbol flash of the Atlas. And there was game. That was cross flash. Which done Dr. All and he call and he then calls Kento Sama. Lord Kento. To cross in and form Daltonus. Kento's confused at the change of mannerism that Dr. Arles for him. It does so anyway. So 
zo. Cross in! Down to the sea! Dorothy knows that the battle's over, and Roger says that Big O isn't made, really made for a sub pilot. Which means that she'll have to stand. But that shouldn't be a problem for her. He says that he's the worst. Or as she would say, Yo, I lost Roger Smith. He says those words aren't what normal ladies use on him. Anyway, we now have Don Tennessee. Oh, you know what this means? We can do this. So we get our little level bonus. So now we have four units instead of three. We have four units instead of five. Now the odds are in our favor. Cross beam. Uh, you two want a cross beam. Cr 
Rozumím! Rozbím! Oh goody, more troops. We got reinforcements. Choose who we're going to break out. I say we break out Great Monzinger, Uso and the V Gundam, Monzinger Z, Shingetterable, June. Joshua, Oliver, and Mabit. Seriously? Attack miss, even though I don't know what the hell that move was. Now, believe it or not, Daltonus was supposed to be the third Voltron or the first Voltron, but it doesn't work because a it doesn't feel right. I mean, Die Rugger? That was enough right there. Die Rugger was enough. You don't want the fireball. Trust me, you do not want the fireball. I, t I told you you didn't want it. That's on you now, isn't it? You too shall get hit with the doubles at the same time.
Do not fuck with the dude, okay? Want some? Yeah, I didn't think so. Oh, wait. Now it's time to get you guys back. But I get the pants! Not much to really say here, folks. You don't want that. Trust me, you don't want what he's got.
Ah, uh, yeah, I love that missile punch. Would this be overkill if I over did it? Nah, I didn't think so. Get top beam! I don't think I ever show this one. It's time to show you. Breath of Fire!
Look at the beam level. Shoddy defense. Trust me, I will look this up as soon as, as soon as I can, right after I'm going to this episode. Because I am leashing a barrel full of awesomeness. damn time. And now to show the most the most exploitative move ever known in Super Robot history. I said it. Yeah. Oh, you guys gotta be serious. Really? Really, he hasn't got his moment in the sun, so 
let him do it. Wonderful. Just because it should be done twice. Nipple missiles. Your woman will thank you for it. Makes sense. So Dorothy knows that the battle is over. Who <laughs> Witcher says you're a louse Roger Smith? He says that the big O really isn't made for a sub pilot, which means she'll have to stand, but that shouldn't be a problem for it. <laughs> it's the worst. Well, I just said that those words aren't, are what normals use on him. So he invites the League to meet at his house. What have we learned so far? A whole lot. At the tower, Dr. Al and Hayato are talking. Dr. Al says that there, there's no mistake when Kento comes in, and then I asked him about his wounds, which have mysteriously healed. And Kento says that he heals quickly since he can remember. Dr. Al says, then calls Kento, Kento-sama again. Which surprised the hell out of him. Why Dr. Arl is talking funnily. The, the truth is out. Kento's either the missing prince or is related to him. The cross sign that came out of Atlas and his quick healing is proof of his Elias royal heritage. Kanto doesn't accept this and went to go eat to forget this. Meanwhile, Roger Smith and Dorothy go to Trace Kushinan's place to negotiate his return to command in Oz. Well, before that, Norman the butler have Dorothy dress up as a maid because she doesn't have any place to go to, and she says that's the only way to pay for her living here. So. Roger isn't thrilled at her being here and says that he'll get her out and Dorothy says that she doesn't think normal humans have the strength to do it that which leaves Roger speechless. So Trez and Roger speak. They recount history of Oz and how Romfeller, who is backing Oz, tried to use Relena Peacecraft. 
Roger asks why Trey doesn't move and gets power back in position that he relinquished. He, saw, he says that when he saw the Gundams with wings driven by the rebels, after meeting them, he felt his fate has changed. Powers born in the weak, the defeated to change their fate against the winner, who are strong and who beat them. He wants to see it. Roger says he's he's seen enough. The state of Earth in space. Both before and after Earth is hidden from outer space. Dorothy doesn't understand it. And Trey says that humanity is complex. Roger well, says that what Trey is doing, is just sitting there, is irresponsible considering he created Oz and should take responsibility. But he says his fight is done with. But with the current situation, he wonders if humanity is headed towards destruction. He wonders if these brave warriors I'm still taping. As I was saying before I was interrupted, he wonders if these brave warriors like like the Gundam Wing boys can show him. Which means he will help and take back Oz. Roger's pleaded with the results, but Trey says that Roger's job isn't done. Trey has asked Roger to help out with the League Meditaire if Trey is to return to Oz because of Roger's word about irrespons irresponsibility. He grudgingly accepts. Dorothy then asks how long he's going to stay in that blue Baron suit with a shoulder confetti. <laughs> Especially in his own home. And Roger too. He always wears that black suit even at home. Shouldn't they be in casual attire or other suits? Yeah, we all wonder that. Which gathered an amused reply from Trey's and replied... He is he'll wear he'll wear it as long as he wants. And Roger says that he prefers black suits. <laughs> Dorothy says that they they have the worst taste in fashion. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. That's, that's so wrong. I'm not sure if I should continue this because it is too funny. It's getting far, far too funny for me. If I can try to get, if I can try to get through this without tracking up here. <sighs> what we have here is a failure to, to communicate here. 
especially for Roger Smith and his phrase Cushionata. Oh boy. You probably want to know what happened. I'll give you a short recap. Meanwhile, at Castle area, Uso and Shakti's home. Uso and the others have to return have returned to search for a bit. Uso tells Shakti that they can't stay here and that the tower is safer. Well, I would say so. I would say that the tower is safer. But at the rate I'm going, well, there's the thing. He's asked if he wants to be there to search for Katagina, but Uso says that the League military seems to know about his parents. Uso says that his father Hanke, it, Hanke once visited Koji's father, Dr. Kabuto, some time ago. Koji remembered the name, but, but only remembered Hunkel mentioned the League Man Terror. And it was why I asked him to describe his father. Please don't do this while I'm recording, please. Go away, Mom. Go. Jeez, she's trying to make a recording at 3 a.m. in the morning. This is what happened. 4 a.m. in the morning. Oh, where am I? Jeez. I'm gonna make this short. <laughs> so this is where Uso asked him to... Uso asked him to describe his father. And she was... Suchi and Moore heard this. And although seeing this comes and punch Susan. That's Odello. Uso gets angry at Odello. Wait a minute. Where am I? See, I'm trying to read all this, and when somebody comes in and say, turn it down, I can't really, I get thrown off. Oh, yes. The punch, yeah. His reason is that Uso is reminding the three kids about their own father that died, and Uso is being considerate for doing this and making Shakti sad and needs to be taught a lesson. Uso gets angry at Odello and they fight. Josh notices this and Odello says that Josh is searching for his sister Rin and should understand how inconsiderate Uso was by talking about his father in front of everyone. Shakti breaks up the fight. Odell leaves, and Josh tells Uso to at least look at Odell's viewpoints and asks Hayato for more info. 
and Uso apologized to Shakti. And with that, I'm gonna stop right here. Because we just made ourselves a nice stopping point and I don't think I can go any further because if I go any further, I'm just going to be more miffed than I was to begin with. So at the very least, I'm going to do this. I think every unit, nope, not every unit is powered up. Big O shall be powered up. And I shall give him more energy. And what I'm going to do is... I forgot which one that is. I think that's Celsius? That's everyone. So with that, I'm going to double save again. Uh, double save. And that will do it for tonight's episode of Super Robot Tyson D. Join me next time as we take on... As we take on... The next installment, which will be... Either J or OG. So, o, OG. So I've been the underdog of the underrated Pookie AZ7. This has been Super Robot Tyson D for the Game Boy Events. And with that, I have said my piece and I am out. <laughs>